Hello, YouTube. Let's start with geography. Polesia. Polesia. Polesia or Polesia is a natural and historical region in Eastern Europe, including parts of Eastern Poland and Belarus Ukraine border region. One of the largest forest areas on the continent. Polesia is located on the southwestern part of the Eastern European lowland, the Polesian lowland. On the western side, Polesia originates at the crossing of the Bug River Valley in Poland and the Pripyat River Valley of Western Ukraine. The swampy areas of central Polesia are known as the Pinsk Marshes. Large parts of the region were contaminated after the Chernobyl disaster and the region now includes the Chernobyl exclusion zone and the Polesia State Radio Ecological Reserve named after the region. Now about the dragons. Let me preface with something from my early youth. When I encountered children from various parts of the USSR while in the Young Pioneers Camp. This was something like Boy Scouts, but with communist ideology. Still, we had fun. And there I heard fascinating stories from boys who came from villages in Belarus, Ukraine, including stories about creatures that rightly belong to the realm of cryptozoology, including the dragons of Eastern Europe and more. Later, I collected materials about those cryptids of Eurasia. Today, I want to turn again attention to Belarus. And you can see some other videos of mine about paranormal Belarusian phenomena. Most of the following is from the research of Ivanov. He is, uh, he's a researcher from that land. People know a lot about Smoky in Polesia. Here, from mouth to mouth, Stories are passed on about monsters living in bottomless black pools, eating all the fish and dragging into the abyss not only birds and livestock, but also children. Some of these terrible deeds are attributed to the huge killer catfish, the size of a log, and others state that this is the work of the smoke great and powerful dragons. They are surrounded by secrets, myths, and legends that have been made about them. These monsters were considered cruel, but fair, wise, but also treacherous. Dragons from fairy tales kidnapped beautiful princesses and perished at the hands of valiant knights. Dragons from legends kept entire villages in fear, burned crops, stole livestock and demanded innocent beauties as sacrifices. Their treasuries were bursting with countless riches, which the dragons treasured like the apple of their eye. Only a few brave souls risked attacking the monsters. Some survived. According to legends, dragons also lived in Belarus, and they were called smoky, that's plural form of smoke. So were there dragons or snake slash serpent? Not only the Belarusians knew about Smoky. Legends about these mysterious creatures have been preserved among almost all nations, all people of this world. The Poles call them smoke. The Czechs call them zmok, zmak or zmek. The word was also present in the church Slavonic language, smoke. Vladimir Dal, a philologist, well known but not particularly nice person, called smoke, smoke, a flying snake, fiery and fabulous. It was these mythical creatures that the distant neighbors of the Belarus ancestors called dragons. But where did the name smoke come from? Some researchers believe that it was borrowed from Germanic languages. And see the closeness of the root with the Anglo-Saxon snaka, English snake, translated as snake or serpent. 
According to another hypothesis, no less popular, the word smoke can come from one of the Slavic verbs, Polish smokach, whistle, click teeth, hiss like a snake, or Belarusian smaktats, suck, drain, deprive of water or moisture. In some Belarusian dialects, smoke is still used today to call a rainbow, which seems to suck water from a lake or river, dipping one end into it. Another compelling argument in favor of the Slavic origin of the word is the fact that the Belarusian smoke, according to numerous legends, prefer to settle either near bodies of water or even directly in them. So his name clearly indicates that he belongs to the water element, while the name snake refers to the creature of the earth element. Legends about Smoky are known in all regions of Belarus. They have a lot in common, but there are, of course, differences. They even describe this creature in different ways. Most often they mention the wings of the smoke, large, sweeping like those of a huge bat. They don't forget about the strong, flexible tail, a deadly weapon when the smoke could well use in battle. But usually he preferred to decide the outcome of the battle with lightning speed, with the help of fire. They say that if a smoke was angry, then with his fiery breath, he could burn not only a person or a house, but also an entire village or a city. In addition, Smokey were endowed with huge teeth and sharp claws and a thick mane and horns on the head and spikes on the back and tail and powerful fins and shining scales. The latter, by the way, was incredibly durable, no worse than the most expensive armor and shimmered in the night with gold or silver although there are descriptions of blue-black sparkles. There are hypotheses in which the mythical creature has three, six, nine, or even twelve heads, a sort of zmei or serpent garinich from the Russian fairy tales. However, most mythologists are unanimous in their opinion. The Belarusian dragon has only one head, but what a head. There was something about it, at the same time from a snake and from a deer. But what stood out most clearly on it were two shining blue, green, or yellow eyes, mesmerizing their beauty and wisdom. The size of the smoky is also impressive. According to descriptions, even the smallest ones were the size of several horses stacked on top of each other. And those that were larger competed with houses in their dimensions. The smoky lived at the bottom of rivers and lakes in huge caves under mountains and hills, or in dense, impassable thickets of forests, groves, and oak forests. They flew through the air and therefore could very quickly move from one place to another. They say that the monsters even knew how to walk on their hind legs and sometimes even pretended to be people so skillfully that you couldn't tell the difference right away. In this guise, these mythical creatures often appeared before women and apparently were popular with them. There are many legends about the love of a serpent and an ordinary girl, but they usually ended tragically. Smokey were considered one of the most majestic mythological creatures, and in particular they emphasize a certain aristocracy, as well as neatness and cleanliness. The famous Belarusian ethnographer and folklorist Nikolai Nikiforsky wrote that Smoke is more careful than other evil spirits. He loves to swim, goes to the bathhouse, and washes himself every day. Dragons are usually called a number of mythological and fantastic creatures. Necessary intelligent. Almost all dragons can fly and breathe fire. Some of them have multiple heads or tails. The image of a dragon is present in all, almost all mythologies of the world and is most often associated with the cult of reservoirs. But they often become inhabitants of underground caves in which they place their treasures. 
these mythical creatures are wise and dangerous, so it's hard to imagine a better test than a battle with them for brave and courageous warriors. That is why simultaneously with myths about dragons, tales about serpent fighters began to appear. In fact, the mythological dragon is a kind of initiation that the hero must go to on the path to treasure or glory. And although the tradition of perceiving dragons in the East and in the West is noticeably different, initially in both places, these creatures are directly connected with wealth, fertility, and even the creation of the world. Look at my video about the Chinese dragons, by the way. <coughs> they can come to the aid of people, but they require respectful treatment, the offering of gifts, and sometimes human sacrifices. But nevertheless, dragons began to represent, to be represented as evil and cruel, closer to the era of Christianity, but not in all cultures of the world. Initially, they were perceived as a separate species of intelligent beings living on Earth together with people. The world dragon is of the Greek origin, Draconus, and is used much less frequently in early Slavic myths than in Western ones. The role of a fire-breathing flying creature was played by a serpent, or a serpent which, according to the description, was practically the twin brother of its European relatives. Slavic myths also had their own snake or serpent fighting heroes. Over time, these two names, dragon and snake, became almost identical to each other. At least in translated literature, they occur with equal frequency. But still, the Slavic tradition of calling such creatures snakes or serpents has survived to this day. It is worth noting that the name snakes is earlier and more general and includes fire-breathing dragons, sea serpents, and a number of other mythological creatures. Huge, fire-breathing, with sweeping leathery wings and a strong pointed tail, sharp teeth and claws, scales shining in the sun and wise but unkind eyes. The smoke could not help but become the central figure not only of Belarusian folklore, but also of all Slavic mythology. They feared and worshipped the Tsmoki, cajoling them in every possible way, and trying not only to appease them, but also to make friends with them. After all, Belarusian dragons rarely showed outright hostility towards the local population. Moreover, they could even come to the rescue when a serious threat loomed over a village, city, or country. They say that before the Battle of Orsha in 1514, the main smoke came to Konstantin Ostrovsky to support and say that in the upcoming battle, all his relatives would fight shoulder to shoulder with the princely army. Maybe this is the secret of the victory in that great battle. The same Nikiforovsky wrote that the smoky extremely rarely attacked ordinary people or family decent people, but villains, drunkards, rowdies, and other violators of public peace had to be seriously feared. They were the snake's favorite victims. So in ancient times, Smokey also actively performed an educational function, and in general, they represented a very complex, multifaceted, and contradictory image. Let's start with the fact that according to some local legends, there were three types of smoky, domestic forest and mastered smoky. The domestic and forest ones were small in size, practically invisible to the human eye, and they didn't come into direct contact with people without good reason. At the same time, the domestic smoky became attached to the person, settled next to him or her, and helped him or her in every possible way. They made sure that there was money in the house, the fields were fertile, and the livestock did not get sick. As a reward, they only demanded respectful treatment and food. On certain days of the year, scrambled eggs had to be cooked, covered with a sieve and left in the threshing floor or attic. True, they say, 
If this was not done, the smoke could get angry, burn the house to the ground and go to another owner. But the forest smoke were not originally good natured and harmed people. They kidnapped daughters, destroyed crops, and sent pestilence to cows and pigs. Moreover, they constantly strived to be in time for the leftover treats before the family would get there. One of the legends say that because of the owner's scrambled eggs, there was once a real fight between the forest and domestic smoky, so hot that in the heat of the battle, they were forgotten and became visible to ordinary people and huge pools of blood remain at the scene of the fight. In fact, these two types of smoky are very similar to East European goblins. The only thing that distinguished them was their faithful service and complete obedience to the smoke ruler. He was just huge and majestic. He didn't stop, he didn't stoop to petty squabbles. And even for good reason, he didn't always appear to people. All his orders were carried out by the household and forest smoky, as well as other small evil spirits who, however, did not favor the smoke for his arrogance, but were afraid of his enormous power. But in addition to incredible strength and enormous size, the smoke master or ruler also had magical abilities. He could cast spells, predict the future, and even turn into a person. It is not surprising that such a set of characteristics easily provided him with the highest step on the hierarchical ladder of the Belarusian evil spirits. And although the origin of the name smoke refers us to either the earth or water elements, numerous legends suggest that this creature by its nature was the bearer of all four elements at the same time, earth, water, fire, air. It is believed that smoke is the prototype of the Slavic god Veles, and therefore is at odds with another deity, Perun, who is capable of striking him with lightning and turning him to stone. According to folk legends, the huge oblong boulders found here and there are nothing more than petrified smoky that did not have time to hide from Perun's breath in time. One of them took a nap on his beloved's lap, but she didn't wake him up in time. The other one did not have time to reach the lake in order to lie down at the bottom, and the third one did not find the right tree. These creatures most often hid inside oak trees, which is why lightning so often strikes old hollow trees. Perun hunts for the smoky. Smoke demanded respect, attention, and sacrifices. At best, he agreed to bulls or sheep, which was followed whole. At worst, he wanted to get the most beautiful girl or the strongest young man in the village. Moreover, the ruler demanded tribute almost daily. And of course, a moment came when people could no longer put up with this state of affairs and decided to kill the voracious snake. The only difficulty was that the smoke was, if not immortal, then certainly extremely tenacious. So it was not easy to cope with him. Strength alone was often not enough, and intelligence, ingenuity, and cunning were used. But in all fairness, it is worth noting that the Belarusian Smoky were not so bloodthirsty or hostile to the people. Rather, Belarus ancestors thought they were majestic, slightly imposing, and even lazy. And if they showed their power in full, it was only for a serious reason. Thus, many of the legends in which a castle, church, or even an entire town go underwater are associated with Smoky. It is believed that in this way, a powerful and wise creature punishes people for the evil they had done. In almost every corner of Belarus, there are legends about cities or towns that disappeared overnight, or about lakes from the bottom of which Bells can still be heard. These reservoirs do not freeze even in the most severe frosts. They say that the smoke itself lives in them. Sometimes it was possible to tame the smoky 
And then they brought their owner power, fame, and fabulous wealth, surrounded him with their protection, showed him ancient treasures and even magical treasures hidden underground. They also participated in the founding of cities. They gave power to the princes, and sometimes, according to legend, uh, the founding prince himself was at smoke, and shared territory with them. The surface part of the city was ruled by a man, and the underground part was ruled by a smoke. But the friendship was such powerful, strong, wise, but proud, arrogant, and sometimes insidious creatures really ended well. Probably one of the most famous representatives of the galaxy of Slavic fire-breathing snakes or serpents at the moment is the Wawel smoke. The legendary dragon lived in Poland in a cave at the foot of the Wawel Hill in Krakow. The city at the time was ruled by no less legendary founding King Krak, after whom Krakow was named. The king did not want to share his power with a crooked monster. The Wawel smoke demanded that a cow be sacrificed to him every day. And if this did not happen, he became to swallow people in return. So Krak sent his sons, Krak and Lech, to fight the adversary. The brothers failed to overcome the monster by force, and they resorted to a trick. They stuffed a cow's skin with sulfur and slipped it to the dragon. He, not noticing the substitution, swallowed the stuffed animal and suffocated or exploded. Some legends even claim that the king Krak himself defeated the dragon. And others say that it was either a tailor or a shoemaker who tossed the sheepskin stuffed with sulfur to the smoke. The dragon swallowed and in order to extinguish the fire in his throat, drank half the Vistula river, which caused him to burst. There are many versions or hype accounts, but the main thing is the result. The city was freed from the oppression of a terrible monster, but the dragon pit at the foot of Wawel Hill remain, and to this day, every tourist who visited Krakow can go down into it on the territory of Wawel Castle and go out beyond the, beyond the walls on the banks of the Vistula. <coughs> By the way, now the Wawel dragon has made amends to the city, bringing constant income to its treasury. The legend of the smoke turned out to be so popular that in 1972, a monument to the main character of the legend was erected near Wawel Hill. It is to him that those who decide to take a walk to the dragon's cave come out to. Every five minutes, the smoke spews fire from its mouth but it can also do this by order. You just need to send an SMS with the word smoke to the phone number indicated on the signs next to the monument. And uh, basically, reportedly, there is simply no end to those who want to feel like the dragon lord. Recently, smokes, smoky have been remembered more and more often, and not only by mythologists and folklorists. For example, the Tourism Department of the Lepel Regional Executive Committee seriously considered this mysterious and mythical creature as the main brand of the region, capable of attracting even more tourists to local agricultural estates. And they have every reason for this. The famous writer Vladimir Karatkevich argued that it's Smokey lived precisely in Lake Lepel. And local residents say that fishermen used to constantly disappear on this reservoir, and then their boats, bitten in half, washed ashore. The bodies were never found, and it was believed that the people were eaten by the Tsmoki, who were dissatisfied with the fact that fish were being caught from the lake with nets. Moreover, it is on the territory of the Lepel district that the only dragon lake in Europe is located. Uh, there is also the Holy Lake, which arose, as legends say, on the site of a church that suddenly sank to the bottom. In addition, according to one legend, another reservoir was formed on the site of an entire city that fell underground. But not only legends, the words of local residents and the work of the 
classic of Belarusian literature became evidence of the existence of monsters, monsters in these places. They say there is evidence of this in the form of real historical documents. By the way, Smoky were even mentioned in the statute of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Another habitat of Belarusian dragons is considered to be Palesia, with its numerous lakes and vast wetlands, as well as the real Belarusian sea that existed in ancient times and disappeared later, <coughs> described several thousand years ago by the ancient Greek scientist Herodotus. It is not surprising that the smoky, famous lovers of water spaces were seduced by such heavenly conditions and settled in Palesia. But time passed, the sea disappeared, and with it, the smoky disappeared. However, they say that in memory of these unique creatures, as well as an inheritance from Herodotus Sea, two lakes located in the neighborhood remained in Polesia, white and black. The Belarusian Sea was first described by the father of history, Herodotus, two and a half thousand years ago in the fourth of his nine books entitled Melpomene. Thousands of years ago, on the site of the modern Pinsk Polesia, a real water kingdom spread out, the core of which was the Pripyat River. At the time, the largest lake in Europe was located here. The water in it, however, was fresh, not salty, since it appeared as a result of the melting of glaciers. However, no less striking than its size was the speed of the disappearance of the Belarusian Sea Lake. On maps of the 16th century, it resembles a horseshoe in shape and is called Sarmatian, and on some even Sarmati Kapalus, Sarmatian Swamp, which clearly illustrates the tendency to water logging and drying out. All this was caused by a number of factors, including ge ge geological processes. For example, the uplift of the Baltic plate. But it is even more likely that having lost recharge from glaciers, the huge but not very deep sea began to become even shallower until it disappeared completely. On the Radzivil map of the early 17th century, in its place you can already see a horseshoe swamp and in the center of which is the town of Beriza. The existence of a sea on the territory of Palesia, in our time it is commonly called the Sea of Herodotus, is confirmed not only by scientific tracts and ancient geographical maps, but also by numerous real finds directly related to ships and navigation. Moreover, in the flat plain of Pripyat, in the middle of the field, not only anchors, but also entire small ships were found. But there are practically no ancient archaeological monuments or treasures found here. The flora of the region also has characteristic features, although after reclamation, much was lost irretrievably. They know a lot about smoke in Palesia. They say that that smoke is very offended and angry that he was forgotten for several centuries. That is why his character deteriorated. But the further we go, the more attention is paid to this mysterious creature, which in the future may become a full-fledged symbol of Belarus, interesting and recognizable even beyond its borders. Activists there are already drawing up expedition routes in search of smoke, collecting stories from local residents and enthusiastically, bit by bit, restoring the appearance of the local snake or serpent. Children's drawing competitions are held, and I believe in 2019, uh, one of the Belarusian basketball clubs changed its name to Smoky Minsk. Who knows, maybe in the very near future, the mysterious Belarusian dragon will stand on par with the already familiar symbols of Belarus, the bison and the stork. And I want to add, I hope the <coughs> Chernobyl nuclear disaster did not impact the dragons of Belarus, did not mutate them as has been done with other animals. This is what I wanted to let you know today, and I'll bring you more cryptozoological tales from Eastern Europe. And if you like my research, please support me through the links you'll discover 
in the description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like my videos and tell others about my work. And thank you for your attention.